Hi there guys, Gary Nodenhip, Gem VFX here to do a little extra modifier tutorial anything based on last week's Ocean Shader. I'm going to do this very quickly because I can do it quickly. I've just got to get my maths right. I've had a few attempts at this and I got the maths wrong. So let's do this. Let's just do this. I'm going to get rid of everything in the scene. I just want a big tile and I'm going to start using an ocean modifier on it. And then I'm going to have another ocean modifier and then I'm going to kind of interpolate between them. So we get basically an ocean animating loop. Yes, that's right. A loop. We can do this, people. So let's begin. I'm going to add a mesh grid like this and let's make it bigger. Let's make it, uh, let's scale this. Let's go to the tab mode and let's scale it by 20. There we go. Press enter. We're done. And then go to edge and we're going to go subdivide and then I subdivide it again. I subdivide it again. And oh, do you know what? Let's subdivide it one more time. Why ever not? Just for the heck of it. Because we've got a really nice big, ooh, bammy, loads of information tile. So I'm going to go to object mode and let's go to the modifiers. And immediately I'm going to add an ocean. And I'm quite happy with the size of that. Let's go back to the waves. I'm going to make the waves a little bit bigger. Let's set the scale on those to two. Just a little bit. And let's uh, increase. Uh, we need sorry, we need to generate from generate to displace. That's right. Sorry, I knew there was something. That's right, um, because we're working here in um, the using using the geometry itself, not the um, displacement. Which because if you use the displaced one, you can put it on a box, on a sphere, you put it on whatever you want. Uh, it's not going to loop though, not the displacement, sorry, the geometry one. You know, the generate. This is displaced. Uh, so we're using, this is why we're using our tile. So I'm going to object, I'm going to go shade smooth. What I could do, don't forget, is also I can right click and go shade smooth. Um, and I am going to very quickly throw on, let's just put that there, sorry, go on. And let's put on a matte cap, shall we? Put in a matte cap. Yeah, let's give it something shiny like that. So we can have lots of nice, nice information. And I'm also going to turn on cavity and just boost the ridge and the valleys in the Let's Do It In World. Let's boost them there. There we go. Right. So when we do get troughs, we might, if we're lucky, get a little dark patch in them. Sounds wrong. Forgive me for that. Anyway, so let's just do this. We've got this thing here. We've got animation keyframes. We've got 250 frames. I'm going to do a loop, five second loop, 125 frames. But I know that when I'm doing my looping, if I make the first frame, the last frame exactly the same, which you do tend to when you do a loop because you go, well, I'll go from zero to four. And then four is the same as zero. So the first frame and the last frame actually are the same and you get a little click, you get a visual click because you're repeating the same frame twice. So I'm going to set it to 126. So let's set the end here to one, two, six. There we go. And let's just move this up here a little bit so we can see the uh, key framey area. Not the keyframe area, sorry. We can see the timeline area. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this up here and I'm going to create in here a dope sheet. So let's go here and put a dope sheet. Now, interestingly, if I press Control and Tab, which I didn't know this, um, uh, it was Sir Wade um, who actually showed me this. Sir Wade, who has been learning Blender and is a Maya guy. But I do love Maya. So basically what the, thing, the shortcut is, Control and Tab inside of the dope sheet. Toggle between the dope sheet and the graph editor. So useful. So let's go into the graph editor. Oh, dope sheet. Nah, let's leave the dope sheet. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to turn on auto render, auto, sorry, auto keyframe, not auto render. Ooh. Um, but I am going to be keyframing here. So I want, I want to do an animation and I want it to go from one time to another time. So now very importantly, I don't want it to start at zero. I want the first starting value to be somewhere above zero but i don't exactly know where yet until i work out what the speed is going to be so let's i'm gonna right okay what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go i'm gonna set this to four and i'm gonna insert the keyframe and i'm gonna go up to 126 and let's set that to eight say and i literally i'm guessing here um and because every time i do this i do it wrong <laughs> Um, and now you can see that I've got two keyframes and if I press play, you can see, oh, it's speeding up in the middle a bit because obviously, and it's slowing down at the end because my animation keyframes are set to automatically be nice, smooth in and smooth out. So I press control tab and you can see, if I press I on my numerical keypad, you can see on that ocean time, it goes up and it goes slow in, constant slow out. So they're already selected. So I'll press T and then I'll press linear inside of that window. 
completely gets rid of all the lovely up and down list, the nice curvy in. It's just a nice straight line. So when I play this back now, yeah, that's kind of, I kind of like that, but I think it's a little bit, little bit slow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this last keyframe and let's go to it and <laughs> get it right, Gary. I'm going to set that to, let's set that to 12. Let's see what that's like for speed. So, do you know what? It does help. What helps? What helps? Saving a keyframe. Let's try it again. 12. Insert keyframe. Actually, it's replace. But there you go. Right, so let's see. Oh, that might be a little fast. Oh, no. I don't know. A little fast, maybe? I'm going to set it a little fast. A little fast is what I'm trying to do. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my last keyframe and let's set that to 11. And replace the keyframe. Check it now. Do you know what? That's enough. I think that's definitely enough. Now, what I'm going to do is I want, because I want this to cycle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two modifiers and animate in and out the scale of the height. So I need the first frame of uh, the first one to be the same as the last frame of the other one. So at the moment, the speed works well. We've got, uh, what value have we got down here? We have got in this box. Let's have a look. Uh, zero. Okay, so and then that one over here. 126. Uh, we've got the Y value of zero. It's not telling me what I want to know. It's not telling me what I want to know. You'd think, wouldn't you, there'd be a thing that says, this value in this box is here. Uh, if you change this value in this box, it'll change in the graph. That would be useful. That would be like Maya. I'm not going to say any more. Um, <laughs> Sounds like I'm dissing it now. I'm not dissing it at all. So there we go. Let's go all and then press numerical number pad. There's that's at zero and that is at, what did we say? That's at 11 and that's at four, sorry. Yes, in fact, we can see here four and then 11. Now that means this, it goes four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11. So that's four and 11, there's a gap of seven. Now the speed is right, but I need to be sure that I've got enough value leading up to that value there that is the same speed as that one there over the same period of time. I'll show you what I mean, because otherwise it's going to be a little bit more difficult to explain. Basically, displacements don't go lower than zero. You can't go into minus numbers. So in order to make sure you get something that loops, you've got to be sure that your numbers are, have the same speed ramp up. So if we've got 11 here and that's a value of four, Okay, well, it's about this seven that I've got to go through. So in order to make sure I've got this enough on a ramp up that I can get to this point here, this has to start at seven. Now, is that making sense? I hope so, because I need to go from zero to seven to get to this, then go from that value up seven to get to 11. I can't go lower than zero. So in order to make the loop work, I have to make sure that the other modifier has enough height to get up to this one. So what we need to do is think, right, okay, well, if I was then to change that to seven, I need to add three to that one. So let's go back over here to this first keyframe, frame one, and we change that to seven and replace the key. And then we need to add three onto this one. So let's go here to this last keyframe. Come on. There we go. And we 11 plus three, of course, is 14. So 14 and replace keyframe. Now, I'm going to duplicate this ocean shader. Let's go back to the first frame. And I'm going to go duplicate. And I'm going to pop this one away for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to this, the time on this has got to end at seven. So let's go to our last frame and save a keyframe for that. Time, insert keyframe at seven. Let's go to our first frame here, frame one. I'm going to set the time in that to zero and insert a keyframe we need to press t so in here <laughs> select those two points try again we'll press t and we'll go linear and now you can see this linear climb from zero to seven is exactly the same incline as this which means the two speeds are the same now if i play this we've basically got two displacements running through each other at the same time and the first frame and the last frame don't look the same because what you've got here is value 11 and value seven together. And here we've got zero and seven. Now the zero and seven are fine, but they're not 
because actually the zero isn't really a zero, it's only a zero in terms of time, it's not a zero in terms of scale. So what we need to do is down here, this one here, this seven here is where it's going to start in terms of the scale, which on this is two. This top one is ocean, and the bottom one is ocean start. So that starts at seven. So this is our start one. So this is ocean, and I'm gonna make this easy for myself and type in ocean start. I'm gonna call this one ocean and a space and end. So I know that this is the one that's got to start because it's got to start on the seven. So this one, that's a time of zero, has a scale height of two. And yes, we'll make sure it has a scale height of two because we'll save a keyframe. We'll then go to the very end of here, frame one, two, six, okay? I'm sure you're getting the gist of this right now. And we'll set the scale on this. We'll scale on this to zero. That's what we'll do to replace the keyframe. Now we're gonna to go to, <laughs> no, that's right. No, no, it's not. I've done it again. <laughs> oh dear. I've done it again, people. Right, okay, let's try again. Ocean start. Time is at seven. Scale is two. Right, we're going to insert a keyframe here. God, blimey. I'm going to leave this as it is because it really makes people appreciate how stupid you can be um, when you think you're not. Right, I'm going to set this one to zero and I'm going to keyframe that as well. So the, this one starts at seven. And then that one fades out. So the other one becomes, the other one kind of takes over. Yeah. But it doesn't cycle yet. Because if I play this watch, kicks up, that one kicks out. And it feels like it should do, but it won't. Because the height that's here, you can see it there, but you can also see it's there. It's not quite the same. So what we're going to, because there's other, other stuff going on in there. Okay. So in our second one, which is ocean end, we're going to go up here and at the very first frame, we're going to set the height on this to zero. Now it looks the same. Put a keyframe there. And then over here at one, two, six, we're going to set that back to two. Okay. Now I'm going to very quickly select all of these, every single one of those things. And I'm going to press T and linearize them. And it all goes wrong. That's right. It all goes horribly wrong because it wasn't selecting all of the keyframe points. And I think for some reason it seems to have missed that one. Yes, it has. Set that to two and insert a keyframe. There we go. So now this first frame, frame one, and the last frame, frame one, two, six, look the same. That's imperative. Now we'll go T and now we'll go linear. So everything runs slowly. Now, so if I play this back, you'll see the two C's are basically swapping over in the middle. And because of that, you're getting a loop because one is faded out at the beginning and the other one is faded out at the end, which means that no matter what happens, if your first one starts on seven and fades out and the other one starts on a different value and ends at seven and fades in, those two points make it loop. Oh, we got it, people. I only took... 15 of your earth minutes, <laughs> including mistakes, which I'm going to leave in. I'm actually going to leave in because I think it'll make it slightly more enjoyable to watch. So basically there's your loop. I mean, that's it. That's, that's, that's your looping ocean. But there is a slight kick on the end, which you don't quite see. You, you might, you probably see it better with a render because you'll def very definitively see one frame. So what we do now is we go back here animation and we set that to one two five and then in theory i'm going to bring this down to deselect the stuff and let's do this and now if i just play this through let's put it there ready let's press play and what in what we should notice is it reaches one two five and then absolutely there's no kick no pop no nothing that is seamless and it's a loop now, of course, that's only five seconds. So if you're doing some little bobbing boat or something, which in theory you could do, um, you can have that bobbing around on that water and it's like a little animation or you can have like an island sticking out of it or something like that. There you go. That's how you do it. Two ocean displacements with sensible keyframes, sensible speeds, one fading out as the other one fades in. And it's a perfect loop. It's lovely. How about that? It's a lot easier than you think it's going to be but it's just that silly thing of getting your head around the maths. 
anyway i hope you've enjoyed that please 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 subscribe uh, please tell your friends and uh come back for more in fact i'm actually i'm on a roll right now I'm about to record another one uh straight after this one which you won't get for another week but it's 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 another reason other than i've got a little bit of free time and i know exactly what i want to do exactly what i want to do okay uh, you guys take care i'll speak to you soon very soon and uh yeah have a good one guys take care of yourselves bye